Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we are at Battleship Cove, Fall River, Massachusetts, and uh, we're going to be talking about one of Massachusetts' propellers here and how the South Dakota class's shaft arrangement was very different from the Iowa class. First off, let me apologize for any sound interference you might be hearing. Battleship Cove is literally located under an overpass. And there's a road right next to us that's uh, pretty heavily trafficked. But uh, we are using the new microphone you guys got us. So hopefully that makes it bearable. Anyway, uh, American fast battleships suffered from vibration issues their entire career, especially at high speed. It was so bad on the North Carolina class that they had to reinforce the after fire control tower to keep it from vibrating so they could actually be usable. To try and fix this, the U.S. Navy experimented with a number of uh, propeller arrangements on their ships. They tried to uh, arrange different number of blades on the different shafts in order to uh, stop these vibrations. And they never were fully successful. At top speed, everything aft of the armored part of New Jersey vibrated. And uh, a lot of the stuff forward of the armored bulkhead also flexed. For the South Dakota class, they were built with their skegs, which are a structure that encases the propeller shafts that allows the weight of the stern of the ship to be set on keel blocks instead of just suspending when the ship's in dry dock. Uh, they put the skegs on the outboard propellers instead of the inboard propellers, which is extremely uh, different from any other class of ship out there. In theory, it might have been a, a really good idea. Uh, notably, the battleship Prince of Wales was destroyed when her outboard propeller was hit by a torpedo and then started to pinwheel, opening a big hole in her shaft alleys. Uh, and if it had been a Sodak that was hit like that, that likely wouldn't have happened. It also protected the inboard propellers and rudders from torpedo hits. So Bismarck, famously taken out by a propeller, uh, by a torpedo hit to her rudder, that might not have stopped one of the Sodaks. Fortunately, the American ships never took those uh, golden BB torpedo hits back aft, but they may have been better protected. For hydrodynamic efficiency, the aisle was reverted to the inboard shafts being on skegs. For the Iowas, the inboard propellers were five-bladed, and the outboard propellers were four-bladed. The inboard propellers were about 17 feet and some change, uh, probably about the size of this propeller back here, although I haven't gotten my tape measure out. And the outboard propellers were about 18 feet and some change in diameter. For the South Dakotas, they changed the numbers and locations of, uh, and sizes of the propellers' blades throughout the ship's career uh, based on vibration issues. And the different ships ended their careers with different numbers of uh, propeller blades on their various shafts. When Massachusetts went into dry dock in the mid-90s, they chose to remove the inboard five-bladed propellers, which is the same as what New Jersey has, and uh, because those were sitting on shafts, and the weight of the propellers not spinning was going to gradually over time crush the shafts down, open up holes in the shaft alleys, and uh, cause dissimilar metal corrosion. The outboard uh, three-bladed propellers is what I believe Massachusetts ended her career with off the top of my head, uh, were left in place. They are supported by the skegs, so they don't have the same issues. And uh, hopefully the massive amount of zincs and cathodic protection on those skegs will prevent the dissimilar metal corrosion. While the Navy was never happy with the propeller arrangements on the South Dakota class, they got it right on the Iowa class, or as well as they could do, and they were never modified throughout the ship's careers. Although, the Iowas did have uh, their propellers swapped out a number of times during their careers as they took damage, but they were always replaced with identical ones. If you want to see one of Battleship New Jersey's 
propellers that was removed uh, because of damage. Come visit the battleship in Camden, and there's one in the traffic circle located between us and the Camden Aquarium. If you have any questions about the propellers or how to get involved at Battleship Cove, where we're shooting from today, drop them in the comment section down below. Battleship Cove is a private nonprofit supported largely by donors like you and volunteers. Um, so if you are interested in supporting them, we've left some links to their YouTube page, to their uh, website, and to their Facebook page in our description below. Check them out and support them any way you can. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, and also from viewers like you. Thank you for your support. And as always, we post new content several times a week. Your support has even allowed us to go out and film on other museum ships in addition to our own battleship. So thank you for that. And remember to like, share, and subscribe so you're notified when we're putting out new content like this. Thanks for watching.